The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Hello and welcome to episode 191 of Video Games to the Max. I'm your host Sean Garmer and here with me today as always Mr. Mark Morrison. Howdy. Well, we're not going to have to talk about the games that we've been playing because we already talked about it on the last episode. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, if you want to hear about us talk Octopath Traveler, Jurassic Park Evolution, East 8, um... What else have you been like? Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2, all that. You can listen to the beginning of the episode 190. We talk about all that in there. Um, uh, one thing I forgot to talk about uh, with the last one kind of ties in more to some other things that have been happening in the entertainment realm here, so we'll talk about it uh, here as well. But let's uh, let's start with the game stuff. Because there is something interesting, which, again, we talked about this during the E3 conferences, that this has been a big thing. It's been r- rummaging around. Uh, even Google is getting into the game in this format. So we'll talk about both of these together here. The first details on the Xbox Scarlet have started to come out. And I guess to avoid the problems that happened with the original Xbox One when it first came out, they're going to make two consoles. One that's going to be the innovative one, that's also going to be the least costly one, is going to be streaming only. And then they're going to make a traditional console uh, as well that's going to be you know a little bit higher priced because it's going to be you know what you're used to. Uh, the streaming box, apparently they're going to do stuff, they're going to have extra hardware inside that's supposed to smooth out the latency on the streaming, uh, remember, uh, Microsoft did announce that they're working on another Xbox, the idea is that it's going to be 2020, we've seen them make a big push for Game Pass, and, you know, the backwards compatibility, and xbox family and all that stuff and of course we also saw you know bethesda announced two of their biggest games next gen games so there's already thought out there of this happening uh google is also working on a gaming streaming service uh that would let you play games um they haven't talked about if it's going to be, they're going to have hardware for it or it's just going to be PCs, but they're apparently going to offload the work of rendering graphics so that you can work this on, you know, you can play games through Google on dinosaur PCs as well as the big, you know, the big rigs that you play them on. And it's apparently it's going to have YouTube integration and all that stuff. So, what do you think about this whole streaming console thing do you think it's inevitable that we have a streaming console do you think 2020 is too early do you need to wait or i think it's too early i I still i mean we can barely still get you know most of the country still doesn't have good internet like you know really good internet let's say or if they do uh data caps and just the overall price kind of crushes it uh for the Google stuff, it's weird, like, because they're primarily, like, like, the Android company. I mean, so, like, what are they going to do? I mean, I that's really why they to... hired Phil Harrison, right? So Yeah. You know, I think uh, it, Google, I don't, uh, I think they could sort of figure it out. Like, 
I think they'll figure out something. I don't know that it's going to be great. I feel like they'll in, you know, they'll introduce like a Mach 1 version and they'll keep working on it and maybe they'll eventually come out with something that will work. Um, I yeah. don't think that you'll have Google, the next Google like game system. But Yeah, my my trep- trepidation is like is going to be like the Ouya 2.0 like <laughs> I think that some... was what they were trying to say that it wasn't going to be an Ouya 2.0, but you know, it is. I mean, yeah. I mean, like I don't know. It seems like, like wanna, that's what they want to do. Yet another system to play Brutal Legend on. It's like okay, I, I guess. I mean, if they can somehow make it to where, you know, older PCs can play newer games, I guess that's a good thing, right? You have yeah. to change your PC less, but I think that was wasn't that what Game Tap was basically? Yeah, I mean, it was a rental service also, but I mean, like. Oh, you can stream, you basically can stream, you know, the new games to this thing, you know, that you want, and then, you right. know how well that turned out. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work very well, that's why they're not in business, but, uh, you know, I, I think with the Scarlet, Microsoft has always tried to be, like, because what what happens with Microsoft, right? Sony wins the Blu-ray battle. Right now, it doesn't really matter that much because digital is sort of winning the battle, period, as far as, you know, how you watch movies, how you listen to music, how you do almost anything. Uh, you know, Nintendo keeps innovating and and winning the masses that way. Microsoft really doesn't... Uh, other than Xbox Live, they haven't really been able to be the innovative one. They haven't been able to be the one that... They they've been able to be first to market or whatever. That's that's a big reason why they won the the with the three sixty. But they're still trying to do something that goes, oh well, Microsoft ushered this in because Sony got to put in you know VR for consoles and and everything else. And I think they're really trying very hard to say, okay, we want to be the first ones to do the streaming console. So they whenever Sony decides to do it. Microsoft gets the credit. Microsoft gets seen as the first one. Microsoft will do it better. You'll buy our console. You know, I think it's too early too. Even though Google Fiber just got out of the the like hell that they've been in, and I think they're finally going to start trying to put that in more cities. That's going to take a while. That's going to take years to yeah. be in everywhere or close to everywhere or whatever and those data especially with uh you know no net neutrality those data caps are not going to go anywhere the unlimited data that you're going to have to pay is not going anywhere more companies are going to start doing it if net neutrality uh, doesn't get protected again um yeah maybe you have like Earthlink and Net Zero, you know the the equivalents of that in 2018 show up again, but maybe you don't. So, you know, and then like, eventually you're just siphoning off these other big companies anyway. So, do they get shut down because of that? And and th- that's my problem is how much are people going to have to pay outside to make this system worth the little bit of money you're saving to buy the streaming one. Am I going to have to upgrade my internet like double for it to be worth something? Yeah. Or, it, you know, even if you, even if you do like n- not every game is just going to be streaming compatible, like something like, uh, Halo Wars. May- maybe sure. I mean, it's a strategy game, right? You know, to make like an XCOM three, it's a turn-based strategy game. That'll be fine. You know, something like... I mean, it's a Sony franchise, but something like God of War, or like, a, you know, Halo, for example. No way. Because the, the second you, inter- you introduce latency, latency, you're screwed. Yeah, and, well, I mean... And no, don't you know, they no matter... sort of do that now with the whole letting you download, though? Doesn't that help with the the latency and all that? Yeah, that's downloading. That's not streaming. <laughs> and you only download, at least for Sony, you only download like you know a portion of the game, and then once you get past that, it's like, all right, now wait for the actual game to download. <laughs> right. 
like, uh, I, I just think it's too soon. Like, just streaming is just too soon. I think it works for like Apple, you know, an Apple TV or Roku because you're streaming a movie. So who cares? Or but, you're streaming like a mobile game or you know something that's yeah. not going to take up much. You know, or an like, old freaking you know old game like old. NES game or whatever, you know, but I, I don't know. I think Microsoft obviously is trying to save themselves by having the regular console come out. I, I and got, I got two words for you: Connect 3.0. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think they've learned the lesson here. I think. Where, where, where is the HDMI in port going to be on a streaming console? So can do this. Stupid, you know, picture-in-picture thing like the Xbox One. <laughs> well, not to mention, if you're going to stream in 4K... Yeah, forget you're that. You're limiting the amount of people that are going to be able to play that. Because you're still talking about, okay, 2020 is not that far away. I still don't think you're going to have the majority of the country with 4K TVs. You know, no. You're, you're still going to have the majority of the country with HD TVs. So, there's that problem. My yeah, so, my you know. my problem is more like bandwidth. Like even if you do, even if most people had you know a 4K TV, like trying to stream a game to that, forget it. And we blowing through your data cap in like an hour. <laughs> yeah, and it's even if you have unlimited data. I mean, at some point, Comcast is going to come, or your cable company is going to come and go. Uh, you know how much data you're using? Yeah, like, stop it. <laughs> like we're going to have to do something. <laughs> like. Well, you promised us unlimited. Well, hey, we didn't think you were going to freaking stream a 4K game for 10 hours. Like, you know. Yeah, with my old roommate, I think and this is, like, why we got I got unlimited internet. But, like, at one point we hit, like, two terabytes of used, you know, used data. <laughs> Good Lord. And that was, like, you know, part that was one of their, like, two-month grace periods. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna just going to have to go get this unlimited internet. <laughs> Jeez. You know, it's just, I I think this has caused more problems than, than uh, look, right now, it's okay, because Microsoft's basically putting it out there as a, okay, well, let's test it. Microsoft has the money to blow if it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, then they shelve it, they stop producing it, and it's uh, another pipe dream for another, you know, next console. But... Yeah. I don't know. Do you think there's a chance it could work? I mean, if let's say if they do some of the offloading to where there's not that much strain on it or something. No, because every game is going to have to be. Every game is different too. Like what what you know, destruction might work for one game. Physics might it might be physics for another. Like it's just I think there's too many variables in that type of in that idea for it to actually like fully work. Yeah, like you said, the difference between like running a Call of Duty and running Cuphead is, you know, night and day. So Yeah. I I think this is a a good idea for them to keep banking on Game Pass and getting people to get Xbox Live and all that stuff, but I don't know. I just I think this is gonna be really hard this soon to go Okay, I mean, here's a streaming only console. That's what Xbox One is originally going to be, essentially. Or, you know, they yeah. had discs, but we, we, they were kind of like, we don't want to talk about them. And there's such an internet backlash. It's like, what do you exp- Yeah. <laughs> now, now, if you wanted to talk about if they wanted to make an all-digital console, that's a whole different deal, right? Because by then, that's two more years that there's less and less physical media that might be out there. People might really make the transition to digital, you know, whatever. If you want to make that case of saying, well, Nintendo's basically going to be doing it with their cartridges, so, you know, whatever. And there's not that many of their games that are out there in retail. You know, some of those have to be specially made uh, for retail. I don't know. I got. Yeah. I actually think I have equal amount for Switch games. You know, I think I have, like, three digital games and three physical games. Yeah, but do you have a big memory card? No. Oh, that's the difference. I have a big. I have the two hundred gig memory no. card. I have three games on disc, and the all of them, the rest of them are digital. Well, the problem with the Switch uh, is I can like they don't have good sales. 
Yeah, they don't. Especially, especially on their shit. Like, the reason I bought Mario and Rabbids was it was $30 one day at Best Buy. So I was like, all right, sure. It's never been $30 digitally, and it never will be. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, Mario, like, the reason I got Octopath, it was $34. I should have got Mario Kart instead for that price because Mario Kart is never going to be $34 digitally, much less physically. Yeah. Uh, the only way, maybe Black Friday. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, is this, th- this is going to be an ongoing thing. Again, they've got, like, another... They might announce more at E3 2019. Uh, I'm sure that they would show the con. They may not even show the console off. Then they might have their own event to show the console off. But we'll see. Obviously, uh-huh. people will have to have it running and and everything else. See yeah. how this works. Another interesting deal is uh, Nintendo is suing two ROM websites for a ridiculous amount of money. Number one, for two, because. This website, or the, the, well, it's basically owned by the same guy. Uh, one of them is a UK version and the other one's a, you know, US domain. Uh, Love ROMs and Love Retro, those are both down actually now. So, the reason why these are getting sued, by the way, is not because they have Nintendo's ROMs. It's because they allowed you to play the Nintendo games in a browser on that website, which is stupid, first of all. Like, granted, they got away with it for a long time, but it's it's just stupid. Like, not 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 really. Like, if you just type in like play SNES games online, you'll you'll find a hundred sites that let you do that. I know, but I just feel like I get what they're doing. They're making it easier to. Yeah, it's like, like let's say let's say you had a computer at work and you wanted to play Mario on your downtime. You're gonna download, you know, Z SNES or some SNES emulator. You just play it in your browser, right? Uh I mean, this is dumb. I think they're selling, suing them for like 150 thousand per, you know, per Nintendo, per ROM Nintendo or title. Which you know, it's, yeah, it's gonna be millions of dollars. The, like I mean, nobody's paying this. The real problem is. Well, they're doing this because, you know, the Switch online thing is coming out soon. Right. Um But, yo, Nintendo ROMs have been on the internet for 20, 20 years. And they're going to keep being on the internet. There's nothing that they're going to be able to do to get them off the internet. Yeah. So. Like, I have full, I think on multiple, con- like, consoles and computers. I have, like, full, you know, NES and SNES ROM sets and Genesis and, like... It does in other systems, honestly. Like, yeah, I have I mean, everything from NES to uh, DS on my on a on multiple hard external hard drives and stuff like that. So, and and then also like, what it's the reason or letting me put ROMs on like the mini NES and the SNES, well, the NES Classic and SNES Classic. That's why people like those things. If you're not just locked to the, you know, the 20 or 30 games, you can just put whatever you want on that thing. Right. I mean, but I understand why Nintendo doesn't just let you put whatever you want, because then that violates the whole... Yeah, they're, I mean, they're doing it with like a wink and a nod. Like, because you don't... Because the SNES had... The SNES Classic had, you know, 512 megabytes of uh, hard drive space. You know, like a flash chip. Those right. ga- the games already on that thing took up 200 megabytes. So they gave you, like, 300 megabytes to basically play around with. They right. didn't need to do that. Like, they could have just put 256 megabytes of, you know, memory on that thing, and so you'd have 56 megabytes. So you'd have, like, you know, 10 games instead of, like, you know, putting 100 more on there. <laughs> right. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know how much space they would have needed for the UI and whatever... Else, yeah. but you know, look, I I get it from Nintendo. Like Nintendo's well within their rights to do this. Like it's, I don't think that it's it's not wrong for Nintendo to do, I, especially the part where they're making money with donations and stuff and advertising off being able to play these games in a browser. So yeah, that's, but I get that point too. It's just too little, too late. Like yeah, I mean. It's I mean, like the I first think... time they try to do this. 
but yeah. it just screams like, oh, we're doing stuff with our NES titles now. Like, time to go back to this well. Why yeah, you... let's let's destroy all these websites that make it to where people won't buy our. And let's be honest, it's not like it stopped people from buying the NES Classic or the SNES Classic or, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm going into stores now. Just I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't buy it, but I, I've been keeping an eye if they have NES Classics in stock, and no store is. <laughs> yeah, they sell out as soon as they show up. Even it's... the SNES Classic, like, that came out last year, you know, around, I think around July or August or something. Like, I've just started seeing them in stores now, like a few weeks, like, like a month ago. I saw, like, one or like two at a Meyer, which is like a basically a Kmart groceries up here, and I think like one or two at a Best Buy, and that's been about it. And that took almost a year. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. I just think it's a again like Nintendo's well within their rights to do this. I'm not saying that they're not. I think it's kind of petty. Like it's just like really, <laughs> like there's bigger fish to fry in the world than going after a couple of websites like. He gets 17 million visitors. You gotta, you gotta really tell me that these 17 million all don't own a Nintendo console, yeah, or the NES Classic or the SNES Classic or the whatever. Like, and how many of these are like repeat people? Is this, you know, I, I don't know. So Nintendo is not like I hope Nintendo doesn't go full ham because it's not going to help them at all. Um, well, they, they've always been weird about like how they deal with the internet, like outside of their purview. Like, look at what they do with Twitch and YouTube, and yeah, they're the yeah. only ones that have a separate contract with how you make money off their videos. And... It did. It, to be fair, and to Nintendo's credit, I think they make Angry Joe cry, and that was pretty funny. Yeah, <laughs> but is this? Yeah, Nintendo's always been weird about how they do this, and it's to me, it's just. Why now? Like, why yeah. not do it when the NES Classic was coming out? Like, it's like, I get it. I guess maybe now with the Switch and they're putting all these old games on the Switch, and maybe they're gonna maybe they're gonna surprise people and just the virtual console is gonna appear. I don't know. I doubt uh, it. <laughs> or they're gonna have some kind of function for the. Maybe they are gonna have the service that they're gonna keep adding games to and. Perhaps they feel like this is, you know, going against that. People aren't going to pay the... Knowing Nintendo, they'll just include it in the the, the $20 you pay online. They're not going to be like Microsoft or Sony where they make you pay separately for it. So, if you can't pony up 20 bucks for that, I don't know. I mean, that means you're just real cheap at that point. There's a lot of people out there that like that, but it's still like... I think it's just it's a really small minority that you're looking at for that. I, just, I don't know. I, again, look, 17 million is not anything to mess with. We don't really know how that's broken down, and I don't know. Again, I just feel like Nintendo's just just doing that to screw with them. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Nintendo and speaking of Mario Kart 8, they did. Uh, put in a free update to allow you to play as uh, Champions Tunic Link and the Master Cycle Zero. Of course, they used stuff from uh, Mario Kart 8 to put Master Cycle Zero in Breath of the Wild to begin with. So, only makes sense that it would go back the other way. Sure. Uh, I kind of want to play with it. See how I, started, it... I started to get that bike in Zelda originally. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, obviously I haven't gone back to Breath of the Wild to, to even how, do that. But, yeah. How far did you get in Breath of the Wild? I don't know. I think I, I think got you... like 20 shrines and... Okay. I don't know. I didn't go far. Like, I wanted to like it, but it, it, yeah, it just got... I would say, for me, it got like just too oppressive in a sense. Like, I just didn't... I liked... I wanted a little more direction on where to go. Yeah, that's exactly where it was for me. It's like, I love the fact that you can explore, but it's like too much exploring yeah and it's like if you had more of a through line of what you're supposed to do i, I compl 
I completed one of the dungeons, but it was just very underwhelming. It's like I, yeah. this was not fun either. <laughs> I mean, I the shrines are fun, and just kind of you know, tramping on the world is okay, but mm. it's kind of about it. <laughs> yeah, it it can like I totally get why people thought it was great and it's beautiful and it was a marvel and it changed a lot for you know the series and all that stuff. Totally get it. Just. I can totally see why there was a uh, people backlashing against it too. I I I felt that like it's it it didn't jive with me like it jive with a lot of other people. So you know, yeah. S- speaking of more Zelda, uh, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, the Monster Hunter game that's coming to the Switch uh, next month, uh, is getting Day One Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC. So uh, you can play uh, with uh, Link's the the Link's champion tunic again, the hood, uh, wield his bow, and uh, Palacios can or Palacos the the cat that you can name whatever you want can suit up as the Kurok as well. So that's kind of cute, but yeah, that's cool. I I think that it's good that Nintendo's doing this. Obviously, a lot of people, you know, Final Fantasy XIV also did the crossover with Monster Hunter. So, I feel like yeah, that I'm... one's cooler. Like, having the behemoth in Monster Hunter is... Well, they've been crossing over with Monster Hunter with Cap- other Capcom franchises since the game came out. So... Right, yeah, the Dante. Yeah, and Ryu. And, yeah. So, it eh, makes sense. You know. I know you, s- you played some Stardew Valley, right? Yeah. Are you interested in multiplayer for Stardew Valley? Maybe. Like I, I'm kind of curious, like to see other like people's farms because I, I played on PC, but the con like the gamepad is pretty screwed up for it, so I didn't make a, like a great looking farm. Yeah, so you can see other people's farms. You can live in cabins of other people, and you can get married to, uh, you know, people. So. Uh, that's that's cool. Makes it feel more a little bit more like uh, Animal Crossing, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and that I know there's a lot of people that are fans of that. So uh, the Switch one is getting worked on, I think. But there's no split screen or crouch co-op on. Uh, I don't know if that's on every version or just on not on the Switch. Um, but yeah, I mean that's again that's cool that they're working on this and they're adding stuff still. To a game that a lot of people like, and it's coming out pretty soon, August first. I think it's like the one dude making it, so it's like yeah. what else, I mean. <laughs> yeah, have what too else? Much else going on? <laughs> yeah. What else he... I know you are one for collector's editions sometimes. Resident Evil Two Deluxe Edition for two hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that. I saw that, and I was like. So it comes with a statue of Leon and a box, and that's about it. <laughs> it comes with an extra DLC pack, um, which well, that's gives... A, that's, that's $100 right there. <laughs> uh, you get Leon and Claire get extra costumes. Uh, I think some of them are also from like the original game, or the original version of the game. Uh, you get a special weapon, the Samurai Edge, um, the original... You, apparently you can soundtrack swap as well. You get the figure of Leon. You get an art book. You get the digital soundtrack. A poster. There's a lot in there. I mean, I'm sure that the figure of Leon is most of that price, but... You know. Yo, I mean, I, I won't... I'm pretty disinterested in it. But the only thing that makes me interested in that Fallout 76 game is that helmet that you can get with the special edition. <laughs> so you're thinking about the special no. edition then? <laughs> no. <laughs> you're like, uh, I don't know. That's... If, if someone wants to send me the helmet, go free. But that's about it. You can there keep you the game. <laughs> there you go. Get, get and, to... and I've heard that Spider-Man special edition is like sold out really well too for some reason. or like It's like sold out. Oh, you mean the one with the PS4 Pro? No, like, because the, the, I mean that's four hundred dollars. Well, with the but game. I would want that PS4 Pro. That thing looks awesome. 
No, they they're making a special edition for Spe- oh. like Spider Man that's like two hundred dollars or whatever, and you know it comes with like a Spider Man statue and like you know other costumes and crap like that. But yo, know, I'm done with statues. Like I don't want them. Like <laughs> come up with different shit. Come uh-huh. like. You know, people have to prove they don't want those, though, because every time they come out with one of those things that have statues, people buy them. Like, Metal Gear Solid Five had a cool, like, that cool bionic arm, or... Yeah, Fallout like, with the Pip-Boy. Yeah, or, like, yeah. Uh, Call of Duty has, like, the... Well, this is a long time ago, but it had, like, the night vision goggles, or, like, the remote control car, you know. Make something at least worthwhile, or, you know, cool, not... There's a statue of Leon... I guess. <laughs> well, you know, you can get a. You, I don't know what you get in the Woo edition of WWE 2K19, but you know, it's a, a lo- Ric Flair. A lock, a lock of Ric Flair's hair. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna take your money and never pay you back, as well. <laughs> uh, so, a surprising announcement, which makes sense now after NBA Playground, uh, Saber Interactive announced that NBA Playgrounds was kind of going away for a little bit with a delay, but they had some surprising information in store. Well, all of a sudden, 2K Games announced that they are now the publisher for NBA Playgrounds 2, and it's called NBA 2K Playgrounds 2. It's coming out on all four of the main systems. And uh, now you'll get the action of Playgrounds 2 with NBA 2K behind it. So that's promising because I love the idea of Playgrounds, but good God, it didn't play well. And it had way they did some big update, and it still had the same problems. Yeah, that's I remember you saying that. Like, and uh, yeah, what's wrong with this new NBA Jam? <laughs> EA doesn't. EA has a hard enough time trying to make NBA Live relevant. No, I don't think yeah, they want to. Imagine, imagine they just made, it, made an NBA like. It's abandoned live because no one cares, and this made like a new good NBA Jam. <laughs> that would be awesome, but they're they're too busy trying to make NBA Live into like NBA Street. So I don't know. It's, I'd love for them to do it too, but I guess they feel like it's it's not worth it to them. Yeah, I mean, like 2K can afford to do it because NBA 2K makes oodles of money. So why not give them an alternative? Um, I mean, they're even saying somebody actually went on record and said they were going to invest in the WWE 2K games. So that's All a miracle too. in itself. <laughs> I would love for, they should like make another kind of WWE game that's not that because you guys are obviously like mailing it in with that one every time. Uh, my, my my hope. I mean, All Stars Two would be great, but that's never going to happen. My hope, sincere hope, and I'd actually buy this game, is that Immortals game they made a few years ago on phones that, like, yeah, you know, Shao Kahn is Triple H or whatever game. Uh, right. If they actually made that into, like, a fighting game. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. The, uh... Because then you could then you could transition NetherRealm to being, like, a three-year studio where, because they alternate Injustice and Mortal Kombat every right. year. So then he could introduce, like, oh, here's, like, the new, instead of those two games, here's Immortals, where Paige is Sindel and all this other crap. Yeah. And then next year is going to be Mortal Kombat, and then the year after that, Injustice, and then another WWE game. That'd be awesome. I was surprised, like, nothing ever came out of that of, like, let's try to make this more new. But that's the thing. WWE 2K makes all these mobile games, which, to be fair, they make them money, and I understand. But it's, like... Damn, that'd be great if they did it on their console. Uh, yeah, but, I, but it, it's it, weird it, that like there is a uh, Mortal Kombat. No, there's an Injustice arcade game that's mm-hmm. based on the mobile version. And really, that's, that's terrible sounding. <laughs> like if you're gonna make an Injustice game, just shove a PS4 and a you know arcade bu- arcade uh, machine, you know yeah. kiosk, and you know do it. I I don't get that. That's that's weird. It's like Yeah, I you know, again, if they're investing in it, that's great, but it would be nice to have even if you did like a Legends of Wrestling esque 
like WWE game that just is a little different than 2K. It'd be great. Just, just give people a different option. It'd be great if they just said we're gonna, we're finally gonna take this franchise away from the Ukes. <laughs> That's, that's that the problem. is what they need. That's the biggest thing they need to do. Take it away from Ukes so it's not the same freaking game. Ugh. Because I mean, Ukes made a few good wrestling games, like originally, like the I think the first few Smackdowns were Ukes, and like people liked the Smackdown vs. Raw or Smackdown game of like 2013. Well, here comes the pain, you know. Yeah, WWE 13. I had someone that people but... seem to like. Like the most, I think. That was also the first time that they did the story mode. It had the Attitude Era, which is, you know, you're never going to go wrong with that as far as old fans, so. But, yeah, they've just been, like, driving that franchise into the ground even more than, like, NBA Live. Oh, for sure. Just got to do least, something different with I it. I mean, no one cares about NBA Live, but those games slowly are getting better. If anything, mm-hmm. like, the WWE games are getting worse. Like, every, like oh, they may have, like, one or two new systems, like, every year, but... They just continue to show their like age, and they just get more and more irrelevant. Not to mention, and, uh, like that Switch port that was an abomination. So. Oh yeah, and all you know, all they care about is like, oh, we got you know two hundred wrestlers in this version, or you know, this game or whatever. It's like, okay, did you fix the grapple system, the reversal system, yeah, the weapon it's like, system? It's like, like no. oh, we how got, many pre-order got... bonuses do we have for this game? You have the Ric Flair. You have Ronda Rousey, Rey Mysterio. It's like you keep adding shit on top of it to like add bells and whistles. So people forget about how bad the game is. Like, okay, unless you're gonna include like one of those like Asuka porn videos from Japan, I'm not really interested. Like... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Asuka Funko Pop in today. It looks looks really cool. So that, that um... makes that joke extra funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Telltale. Um, to the surprise of no one, they're not done with Walking Dead. Even though this is apparently the final, uh, season, this is the final season of Clementine's story. But that's all they're gonna say on that. Yeah. I mean, they can always make more. The problem is, no one's gonna care. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, you can make all the spinoffs you want, you can start a whole new series of Walking Dead... I mean, great that they're going to have a new engine now, but I think people are starting to, I don't know about the TV show, but as far as the other stuff goes, they're starting I, to, to wane on that. I so. I, I think, like, I mean, I, I stopped caring about Walking Dead, the TV show, like season one. I, I, I knew then it was a bad I show. I think I made it to, like, season three, and I was um, over it. I think the problem with the games is, like, people like Clementine, really... Uh, but even like season three of that of the games, like no one cared. Like they introduced, yeah. she's like she's in it, but it's not really her story. It's like this new guy's story, right? And no one cared, <laughs> so it's like okay. Yeah, and then it's just, I mean, again, like good for them to like finish it out or whatever. Hopefully, I mean, they just, give the series a break for a while. I think ultimately it's just gonna end with her dying. I would assume. Yeah, I would assume. Or at least too. I would. At least I would hope, like, cause I don't want her to survive, and then, like, oh, there's always a question, like, are we going to bring her back again for, like, the... I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happens. Yeah. And then, like, after they've done two spinoffs of Walking Dead and it does nothing, they go, oh, Clementine's back, everybody start caring about Walking Dead again. It's like, nope, we're over it. Yeah. Like, you know. I just think Telltale's, like in a state where they're desperately trying to throw everything they can against, like, the wall, see what sticks. Yeah. And nothing is. <laughs> like... Yeah, that, I think Wolf so, Among Us is going to be that, like, you're really going to be able to know where Telltale is if that doesn't do anything. Say what you want about uh, Vampire, like, Don't Nod Vampire. Yeah. And, like, their Ca- Captain Awesome game or whatever. They are at least trying to be, like, trying new things. And, like, I don't yeah. like Vampire that much... It is a lot of problems. There's people that really liked it, though. Yeah. Uh, but it attempted to be different. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, no, I agree with you. Like, it did actually try to do something different, and Like, that's... when's, like, when's the last time uh, Telltale made a not-adventure game? Like, the poker games? <laughs> yeah. Basically, like, never... <laughs> 
Yeah. As soon as Walking Dead hit it big, they were like, okay, this is what we're doing. Yeah, to the detriment like, of the company, because that's, that's all they can do now, apparently. Yeah. Like, I mean, no one cares. And they keep signing, I mean, they have that deal with Stranger Things, and I like Stranger Things, but it's like, I'm not holding out hope that that game is going to be interesting. So... Yeah. It'll be a, a five episode uh, game series about Barb. I, you know what? It wouldn't surprise me at all. Because they always take the most like ancillary character. Like that's what they do with Game of Thrones. Like they just took the most like ancillary character and built a whole you know game around it. It's like no one no one cared. <laughs> uh, you know, I think part of it is is I mean, also it, just. They, they can't make a show about Game of Thrones, like you know, yeah, uh, Jon Snow or whatever, because yeah. it's gonna fuck up the TV show or whatever. So it's right, like, yeah, but. they have to. I mean, at least they had Cersei and yeah, uh, Peter Dinklage, Tyr- for like yeah, an Peter episode. Dinklage in there, but you know. for like they said twenty lines and they bolted. So it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he seemed to care a little bit more about it than he did for the original Destiny. So. Uh yeah. We knew the character, at least, so that helped. Yeah, that helped a lot. So, uh, to the surprise of no one, but just interesting that it's going to go, it's going to turn huge in one year. The Battle Royale genre, according to analysts, is going to go from $2 billion to $20 billion in one year. Uh, probably because so many of these games now are going to have Battle Royale modes. Um, yeah. 343 won't, says that Halo probably won't have one, but all the other big, you know, Call of Duty, Battlefield, whatever, are having one. You know, PUBG, or Fortnite's not going anywhere anytime soon. PUBG's, you know, trying to stay with it. And, uh, then you have stuff like The Calling 2 that tried, and, sorry, not Got happening. yanked the fuck down in two days. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, what, two people were playing it? <laughs> so, yeah, I think, like, three, like the Steam charts are, like, five people total. Yeah. Like, that's, uh, what you want. that's what you want in a um, Battle Royale game. <laughs> you know, I, it is amazing to me, like, how fast this has blown up. You know, and... Do you think, like, this actually has, like, staying power? Or is this something that's, like, oh, it's going to be big for a couple of years and then... People will move I on think to something that, else. I think. I mean, it, it it's following like the do, like the uh, MOBA uh, pattern pretty well. Like you got like the two ga- the two big games, Fortnite and uh, PUBG, are basically like Dota two and League. And then you yeah. have a bunch of like games that are trying to you know trying to break into it, but don't. Yeah. <laughs> Heroes of the Storm is around because it has a Blizzard name, and that's about that's it. A re- yeah, like I I know no one playing that thing. <laughs> I mean, there, yeah. there's people that play it because they have tournaments for it or whatever. It's but it's like, you know, you don't hear it as much as League and and Dota. So, you know, but I agree with you. I feel like it's gonna go into that MOBA space though, where you know it's there, but it becomes out of that stream of consciousness at some point. And unless they get like their own league or something, then maybe. Like, where, you know, they join Overwatch as being on TV, then, okay, they'll stay. But I feel like eventually they're going to kind of go off to the side, and there'll be something well, else. Well, I think the... I, I just... I think the genre itself is not that deep. Right. Like, I got Battlegrounds, and I played it for, like, maybe, like, oh, maybe, like, a month. And I was like, yeah, hey, I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm okay, and I'll never play Fortnite, despite how many fucking requests I get for P- my some PS4 friends, I, who I just want to ignore. <laughs> yeah, I I do think that there is something to be said for it's something that even like I see I pick up my daughter at summer camp and I see kids playing Fortnite on tablets. Yeah, so it's something that anybody can pick up and play. Not that you're gonna play you know, the best, but you can understand it. It's not like League and Dodo where it's like, oh my god, this is a freaking whale that I've got to try to understand and nobody is here to help me, nobody cares. Uh, 
Like, and they, they actually hate you if you don't, you know, know how to play well. Like, this is a game that you can go in, you can, doesn't take you long to figure out. You can play it on your tablet, on your phone. Uh, you don't have to have a big console. You don't have to have, like, a major PC. I think that there's something to be said for that as well. It allows it to have that staying power, you know, and, and, and Fortnite's free. Yeah. So, there's that, too. It will keep making money though, so people get ready, get ready for that. Unlike the calling too. <laughs> <laughs> unlike yes, unlike the calling too uh, a lot. Uh, something that uh, Sony, uh, Sucker Punch, and anybody else involved with this hope makes money. I am a fan of this series. Sly Cooper is finally getting that animated series they've been talking about for it feels like for a few years now. Uh, Fifty-two episodes in season one. Episodes one to twenty-six are coming out in twenty nineteen. Episodes 27 to 52 are coming out 2020. Uh, October 2019 and July 2020. So it's like a six month gap. Um, I enjoy the characters. So I'm down for this. I, I don't know about where you are. with. I've never Sly. played a Sly Cooper game. Because uh, that was like a, I think a PS2? Yeah. Or PS2. I, guess I have the yeah, collection think... on PS3. So. Okay then yeah I probably started PS2. I never played them. I've heard they're good. Uh, you kind of question, like, are they going to make a new game? <laughs> I wonder if this eventually does spawn into them making a new game. There's... Or I, I mean, or just like do a remaster of the first one, like they did with like a Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, I mean, Sucker Punch is obviously busy with Ghost of Tsushima right now, so I don't know. They could, I mean, yeah, but they could farm that. I, they could farm that out fairly well, I think. Probably. Would it be as good as Ratchet and Clank? I don't know. But... Like that's an, like that's what a game I want. Like I want a new. Actually, want a new Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> I hope so. I hope we get that. I mean, the three D. You know, the three D platformers had their moment, um, and they're they're still trying to have you know crashes come back, spirals come back. You know, so it's there if they want to do it. Yeah. And uh, what do you think of the Spider-Man trailer? Super Sable is now a villain, and uh, Miles Morales, Mary Jane, both shown off. Mary Jane seems like she might be playable, even. Uh, yeah, but it's probably going to be some really bad stealth section. <laughs> well, it definitely looks like it's a stealth section. I, I mean, again, I wonder if it's going to have a problem with having too many villains. But, well, uh, I mean, this is like Spider Man has by the like one of the largest rogues galleries by you know aside from like Batman, so you kind of want to you know you're gonna have major villains, but you also kind of want minor villains just to have like little little fights with as well, right? And then like Harry, not Harry, uh, Norman Osborn. Yo, I wonder if he's gonna be the Green Goblin at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's like a no-brainer. Yeah. So, yeah, this the story trailer looked fine. Uh, it didn't really show off anything new, though. Or, you know... Yeah, anything that, like, knocks your socks off or whatever. But yeah. it's there. Uh, I, I'm, I'm excited for the game to come out, so... Just oh, a yeah, few more months. That's still the game I'm, like, probably most looking forward to for, like, the rest of the year. That's up there for me. I can't really think right now of what's also like, left out there. But For me, it's like that and Tetris Effect, and that's about it. Yeah, now that Kingdom Hearts 3 got moved to next year, that uh, that number is starting to uh, dwindle how many games I'm still excited for. So, finally, we got to talk about the elephant in the room. That it, Well, we haven't talked about it. It's, it's long past been talked about at this point, but... So there's this thing that went down with ArenaNet, uh, Guild Wars 2, the people that keep up Guild Wars 2, anyway. Uh, they obviously are, or well not obviously, they've been trying to make be very forthright with their community and get information from their community and they have partnered streamers and everything else. And uh, one of their... Uh, devs, 
uh, named Jessica Price, was she regularly speaks out on Twitter. She was on a Reddit MMA talking about the difficulty of crafting unique characters in MMOs. And she was under the belief that it's very difficult to make them. And so a partner streamer named DeVore uh, politely basically disagreed with her, saying that players should be given the option to meaningfully express their character through branching dialogue and, uh, you know, like we've seen in other games. And, uh, you know, maybe they'd be more invested if that was in MMOs. And she responded by, thanks for telling me what we do internally, my dude. The next rando asshat who attempts to explain the concept of branching dialogue to me, as if you know, having worked in the game narrative for an effing decade, I've never heard of it. You're getting insta-blocked. Uh, she also sort of brings in uh, sexism into this by, re- you know, quote-tweeting him saying... Today, and being a female game dev, allow me, a person who does not work with you, explain how to do your job. Uh, then a writer who also works there, who's worked there for 13 years, basically just responded by saying, Hey, guy, she didn't ask for your opinion. Uh, there was somebody else that also re- you know, responded by saying that thank you for mansplaining her job to her, whatever, and this started a whole fracas, and people started taking sides, it was almost Gamergate level, and then, basically, also there was, um, you know, I think uh, the guy, Price also let, he also kind of, the, the, the one thing that might have, I think, got in trouble is that he made a point to say that this is their private social media account and kind of made a bad analogy that just doesn't need to be... It's that whole same analogy of like, uh, well, you don't understand this, so you shouldn't critique it kind of thing, and that has long been disproved that that's just stupid uh, to say. But either way, this caused a whole big ordeal. The co-founder, president, basically fired Jessica Price for the outburst and he also fired um the the guy that defended her which he really didn't do anything wrong but he fired him anyway uh probably just because he didn't want any backlash for firing the woman and then not firing him and you know just just to prove a point that they both made a big deal and and so you know they're getting fired she later got to say that she basically never got to give her say about it. Um, she was never giving any warning about her social media use or whatever. They just decided to fire her. And basically, Mr. O'Brien didn't felt like, you know, DeVore was being attacked. And so she needed to be fired or whatever. Um, I don't know. How do you... I know we talked about this on the one yeah. about erased. So... uh. I mean, I still, like, she came across as incredibly bitter. Uh, right. Like, the guy, you know, he wasn't mean an a-hole, and he literally said, like, no disrespect, and then he asked his question or made his point, and then he ended it with saying, like, again, like, no disrespect, or, like, I I appreciate what you do or something like that. Uh, and he told her know, that her thing that she wrote was also interesting. Like, he actually read it. It's not like he just took the headline and said something. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, she just went, like, I mean, I think, you, like, the last time we talked about this, like, you mentioned, like, she might have had a bad day or something, or you tried to bring in, like, that can happen, or but, yeah, she just came, came across, like, super aggro about the whole situation, bringing up sexism, where he wasn't talking, like, oh, because you're a woman, you don't know how to write multiple, you know, branching paths. He, he was more, like, why <laughs> or you know not being offensive or he's kind of questioning and he's also ostensibly working for the company she is too like he's a streamer for guild wars um, yeah i mean they need each other basically you know 
I don't think the guy should have got fired necessarily because he, um, you know, he was just kind of trying to support his friend or coworker. But also, like, them complaining, like, always, you know, it's her private social account. It's like, well, it's set, it was set for public. And I think at the time she said, it had, she wrote, like, oh, working for ArenaNet and her, you know, in her bio or whatever. So, no. <laughs> like, I've had interactions with, uh, you know, game developers on Twitter, both good and bad, and yeah, that's you be respectful, and so is this guy, but she just went off on him for like no good reason. Yeah, it'd been different if he acted like a lot of people do. No, I shouldn't say a lot, but there are people on Twitter that don't have a filter, don't think about what it takes to make the game or anything like that. They just get mad that this feature is not there or that this doesn't work or whatever and just start insulting them. And it's like, um, I remember when I went to go look for the, who do I ask to go get the Earthfall code, which they never responded to me and that's fine. But, you know, I'm not entitled to, we, we as a site and I am not entitled as the person that goes and asks for codes we're not entitled to get anything. I mean, it's. I'm always thankful that the people that do answer us and whether they say yes or no, uh, I'm always thankful that we've gotten to that level where people actually respond and we do get codes and whatever. We don't get everything. You know, like I, I think I've said this before, like a lot of the big games that we have reviews for on the site right now, I bought them myself for Mark to review or, you know, for Stephanie to review or whatever. So. You know, just because I feel like as a site we need to have those games there. But still, you know, uh, there are people that feel like entitled that, great, you bought the game, you say what you want, but there's a level to which you, it goes beyond I bought this. And then it gets to where you're just being personal and attacking someone. And he wasn't doing that. He, there was He didn't even get near that level for her to react to him that way. And that's what was wrong in this is that, like, you might have been having a bad day. This might have been the however manyth person that might have said something to you or the tenth time you had to deal with it this week or whatever. But you didn't have to react that way. And, yeah. Is this... Yeah, like, if you do want to react that way, do what uh, Hideki Kamiya does for uh, Platinum and just block everyone. We asked yeah. you a stupid question. <laughs> There's a mute button. Just mute them. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, that's what's so funny about, like, Twitter made it so easy to just soft block someone, and they don't even know that they got blocked. So, like, just, there's better ways to, to deal with it than that. Um, again, I get the whole, like, the women that came out to defend her, and, like, they get this on a daily basis, people that are, you know, guys going around telling them how to do their job or that look down on them because, you know, they're a female in gaming and don't think that they, you know, know better or whatever. I'm not saying every guy's like that. I'm just saying that, you know, they say that there are still many men that go around doing this. But, again, it's like there's context for everything. There's a reason. I don't think she should have been fired for that. Like, I think she should have been suspended at worst, reprimanded, you know, well, that's something, I don't know. Just Like, she had issues before with some other employer, uh, and, like, even her Twitter profile was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, offend people or something like that. Yeah. So I can understand if you, if you have a disruptive employee that, you know. But again, you like, she was, she said that she was never written up or given a warning about how she used social media. So... Yeah, okay. I mean, you're, let's, I think you're like, let's say your, your title is like editor in chief of the website. Right. So on the podcast, you're normal. But if on your Twitter, you just started saying the N word constantly or completely went off on someone for no good reason, uh, some people on the site might have an issue with that. <laughs> right, exactly. They would. So I, I would hope like, they would. But yeah. Uh, I mean, so like, it, let's say you like it was a bad day for you. You just don't go online, or you know you moderate your behavior, and then if someone's bugging you on Twitter, you just ignore them or you know block them. 
Like, so, right. yeah, I, I think she's completely in the wrong. Like, I think if you want to get, like, anger management classes and then try to go back to arena net or, you know, make some amends to that guy, that'd be good. But, like, she she also dug herself further in the hole by, like, basically going, like, oh, arena net never supported me and then, like, attacking the company after she got fired. And it's like, yeah, that's that's a real good way to get another job in the industry. <laughs> yeah, the thing, was, thing is, though, that there's, uh, there's a lot of backlash towards him of people, you know, not being happy about this, there's apparently even like instructors in the game industry that are going to make sure they don't, they tell their students not to try to go work at arena net because they felt like the owner, the owner, the guy didn't have, you know, their employees back, especially firing the guy that didn't do anything. Like you as a coworker should defend your other coworkers. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying this is getting mad at somebody on the internet. There's varying degrees. Obviously, if that coworker steals something from, you know, let's say you work at a store and that coworker steals something, that's a whole different kind of defense. You don't defend your coworker at that point. But like, he is, he works with her. He knows what she's going through. He's defending her. He didn't insult the guy. You know, he didn't say anything bad. Yeah. Like, he intellectually said something that can be mis, you know, taken as, well, this is kind of like you're being mean or whatever, but it's like it's, it's don't it's like the stupidest thing to get fired over, and it's totally screwed up on on that guy's on O'Brien's part, and they everybody was wrong in this except for the guy except for the guy that originally responded to her. He was never wrong, but the owner well, was wrong. Jessica Price was wrong, and the other issue. Uh, is like the inevitable, go- you know, troll goblin piling on different women at like different websites or yeah. different companies. Like fuck that, fuck everyone who does that. <laughs> well, no, and I also agree. Like the guy shouldn't have decided to go with the mob. They got mad and and like wanted her head, and it's like this happens way too much. And we're gonna talk about it in just a second, like it, with something well, I, else. Like this happens think- way too much. I think like, after this, like there was some company, uh, I forget the company name, but like they kept getting emails to like fire this one woman who was working there, and like they forgot to put in her name, so it literally said like female, like in, like the it was, it was just a form letter, but the form letter like it said like you know dear CEO or dear company president whoever, uh, I'm having an issue with this employee, and it was like insert female name, <laughs> and it's like wait a second. That could be anyone. <laughs> well, like half of half of them said her her name correctly, and then the half of them were like insert female name or something like that. So yeah. it's like, yeah, you go go back go back to you know the basement, you know your mom's house, and continue to never have sex with a woman because you never will, and that's why you're so angry. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's. That's the mob mentality that you have on social media now. It's just like it's ridiculous. Like some a section of the internet gets mad, we got to take divisive action. And the same thing happened to James Gunn. Yeah. Uh, of course, the director of the Guardians of the Galaxy series. He had a ten-year-old. This is another thing that just happens on Twitter all the time. Uh, delete your Twitter, <laughs> like. Delete old shit. Just delete it. D- delete old shit, even if it's good old shit. Just delete it because somebody's going to bring it up. Well, a Republican website, the Daily Caller, because James Gunn has come out and said things against Donald Trump in the past. Yeah. Uh, basically found these uh, 10-year-old tweets of when James Gunn was still doing stand-up. And look, they're offensive. He talks about necrophilia. He, he talks about, you know, some really terrible shit in there that he makes jokes about. They're just bad jokes. They're tasteless, bad jokes. But it's 10 years ago. The way we think about society now is way different than the way we think about society 10 years ago. And, well, yeah, it's just. A few, th- a few things. I guess he apologized in 2011 or 2012. 
Uh, yeah, Disney knew about it when they hired him. Um, like it's funny, like everyone, you know, all the right wing websites, like you know, lambast him, but then they're they're cool with like Milo, Yiannopoulos, whatever the fuck his last name is, or like Denise D'Souza. You know, as long as they support Trump, they're all fine with it. Like proving what you know, what idiots they are. Um, yeah, I'm fr- like I'm not. I'm not friendly with James Gunn. I'm friendly with like some of his kind of like uh, not contributors, but maybe like some of his stable. Right. And like, yeah, everyone, everyone pretty much says he's like the nicest guy in the world. You know, he didn't deserve this. Um, you know, Disney made a mistake. You know, yeah, there's a petition yeah. out there. Batista was really heated. He said he did, he acted like he didn't know if he well, was like. Gonna... Batista... I think Batista actually has, I think he mentioned a few times, like, he has two moms. Like, you know, he he came from, like, a lesbian couple. Right. I I don't know if he was adopted or, like, you know, you know, if he was, like, biologically, like, one of their sons. But, yeah, good for him. And, like, here's the thing is, imagine, let's say, they, okay, let's say he doesn't get rehired. And they make Guardians of the Galaxy 3 with Brett Ratner directing. Because, you know, he, he'll do anything for a pay, you know, for a pay, pay stub. God. Uh, like they're not gonna get uh, Sean Gunn back, the guy who played Craglin. You know, unless he's under like a contract. But even if he is, like, what kind of performance is he gonna give? He's gonna be like probably Five fucking bored. Of I mean, he gave like a ten tweet thing about yeah. James Gunn. Like, right. I imagine uh, he's under contract for at least one more of those movies. So he'll, he'll, he'll probably have to do it unless he wants to, you know, pay a bunch of money to get out of it. Or unless Disney let him go along with. Him. Uh, but so that'll be you know he's not going to give a good performance because there's no nothing in it for him. Batista probably won't. I mean he he'll show up and do the work, but the, I th- he's he was a standout actor in those first two or those two movies. Yeah, I mean he made Drax, so yeah, like, you know, and I. Uh, most of the other cast has come out and supported him too. Yeah, but they they were kind of very P, PC about it because obviously you know. They yeah, can't... but it, I mean, it'd be nice if they came out stronger. Because I mean, they're bigger they're... actors, so they can't really like put themselves out there too much because they have a lot more on the line than Batista does. Yeah, but what are they going to do? Like, let's say Chris Pratt was basically like, you know, fuck all you right wing Nazis. What he's not gonna get cast anymore? Like, give me, like, of course. Well, he is. Disney might fire him for that. So, no, you know. no, they're not. He's fucking main character of the movie. Like, what are they gonna do? Recast him? So, well, like, yeah. Avengers, you know, Avengers four will be all fucked up, and then so we'll start, you know, Guardians three, or like, let's say half the cast did it. They're not gonna recast, you know, half the movie. I agree with you. I agree with you that they. It maybe I mean, should have been stronger, but again, they're, they, not, even, they, they're not even going to recast uh, Dave Batista. <laughs> no, I mean, unless Batista just decides he doesn't want to do it, which I don't think he would. I think he'll eventually calm down and just well, deal I, with I it. Think, but... I think eventually they'll just rehire him. I mean, I, I don't think they'll say, "Oh, we made a mistake," but they'll they'll put on some song and dance. But oh, he went underwent sensitivity training, and now he's fine. <laughs> It's like he didn't need it though. That was ten years ago. You ch- you oh, could yeah. change in ten years. Like Exa- I mean, exactly. But I mean, that's what that's what they'll do to save face for their stupidity of you know firing him in the first place. I, it's, oh, man, I, it's just the people that get offended by it. I, look. I get it. Like I get it. If that is something that you've been through and it offends you, like well, I'm trying I, not to be hateful towards that or whatever. But it's just like. That was so long ago. The 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 change in in how we are as a people is different. It, we're not talking about like a couple years ago, and whatever. It's like this is different, you know. I, uh, I don't know if you saw, but uh, I guess Roseanne is pissed about like all the Hollywood support James Gunn is getting. Oh, and it's like, well, first of all, people like James Gunn. People don't like you. <laughs> And second of all, he didn't go at like he would. He didn't go after someone. It was specific. a general thing. Yeah, yeah. He, he didn't. 
he didn't go after someone specific to make some, you know some you know racist right wing comment, and you know he, 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 like, to my knowledge, James Gunn has never said or oh, George Soros Soros is like a Nazi when he's actually Jewish and like yeah he was running away from them as a kid like what do you expect? I mean, you can pretty much say whatever you want. Well, within context, well, you know, it's that Daily Caller will come get you, but, you know, you can say what you want about Trump. Trump doesn't care. <laughs> so it's, but like, you know, what Roseanne did to what James Gunn did is two different things. I mean, James Gunn just happened to not delete his Twitter. Like it's, but I do wonder sometimes if Twitter should have an option where you can delete things after a certain amount of period. Well, like there are delete there are, all or what? There are different like apps out there that do do it automatically. Like, if you actually do want to look into that, yeah. I just, like, but I, sometimes, like I think, like Twitter gets hurt from being too public. Like you can put anybody's name in Twitter. And find that conversation that's getting the pub, you know, the pub right now, and you can comment on it. Whereas other things, you have to follow that person, you have to know that person in some way to be able to comment. Twitter's so public that sometimes I think it's too public for its own good at times. But you know, I think that's another story for another day. It's as far as how Twitter sometimes hurts itself, but. Uh, speaking of Twitter, Dan Harmon also ran into some problems with a really bad video surfaced from 2009. Um, he apologized. All Adult Swim was obviously not happy about it. And that's that's as far as it went. Um, he talks about he made a pilot that parodied Duxter. It was really bad. Um... And that's all they needed to hear. He the he deleted his Twitter though because you know he got too much really bad press for it. And uh, you know, then yeah, I mean he basically portrayed Dexter as like a baby rapist, which you know that's accurate. That, that's <laughs> uh, that's that's not something you need to be doing. But it's like again. I, f- I feel like the way that Rick and Morty or the you know the Adult Swim people handled this, they handled this better than Disney. Well, yeah, but they're also going to fire Dan Harmon because if they did, then Rick and Morty's gone. Like the other guy does all the voices. But well, also like... Adult Swim needs Rick and Morty. Yeah. So Disney, Guardians of the Galaxy could go away. Disney would be fine. I don't know about that. Like they they well, they'd be fine, come on. but. They'd Those movies fine. make a ton of movie, take ton of money. It do, it no, it does certainly, but they would be okay. Like Adult Swim would suffer greatly if Rick and Morty is not around, especially when you just paid however much money it was to have the seventy episodes or whatever. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Look, there's stakes involved here, obviously, like we just talked about. But, again, I feel like the way Adult Swim handled this is way better than... Like, that's the way Disney should have handled it. Like, we knew about this. We have sorry that these showed up. Like, here was his apology from six years ago. <laughs> yeah, like, the people that are threatening to, like, not watch your shit, how much of a minority is that? I mean, honestly... Uh, I'm like, let's say he doesn't get hired. I'm probably not going to watch Guardians three. Yeah, no, probably not either. He he is he like his sensibility and sense of humor and writing, uh, made that made the first two. And so, like some other director could could have done it maybe, but he had like a good attention to detail, and just let moments kind of happen naturally. So if they yeah, get, like, and, fucking... and like I think Sean Sean Gunn talked about like part of his change in his life actually was it showcased through those movies yeah so so you know. you know they get brett ratner or you know the guy who did pacific rim 2 that sucked uh forget it <laughs> <laughs> that's, yes that's possible Unless Steven I don't know De- 
Stephen DeKnight did Pacific Rim too, and I was like, that was that was terrible. And I watched like they'll get Ryan Johnson or J.J. Abrams to do it. If they got like J.J. Abrams, that'd be interesting at least. Like I, <laughs> I might see it then, but not Ryan Johnson because he made one good movie and the other two sucked, or three I should say. Or source code's fine, but yeah, Warcraft and then mute. No, thank you. Oh God. <laughs> Uh, so, also more controversy, Chris Hardwick is returning to the, to the Talking Dead. Uh, no word on if he's going to show back up on the NBC uh, show, The Wall, but he is returning to the Talking Dead. AMC apparently did the own internal investigation, and their uh, guess, synopsis is that they think he should return to work. I guess there's some controversy with the lawyer they used because he actually worked for the Hearst Foundation. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, huh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. The allegations seem pretty serious from the girlfriend. Uh, she uh, said she had evidence. I would be curious like what what she has, like if there's text conversations or right. video or audio, something like that. Um you think it what would have come out, I guess? Yeah. I would think so, too, that she would have pressed the issue. Maybe something happened in the courts where the issue wasn't pressed. We don't know. But, but yeah. Uh, I, I still, I probably believe her, you know, or what, you know, her story, because she had a few specific details that seemed pretty. Yeah, like, why would you make that up kind of thing? Well, not like that, that. Like, like a few pretty crystal clear details that like it would be hard to imagine she came up with like on her own or right four years after the fact when they were you know not together yeah, yeah not together anymore if it was like a month if it was like a week later that's one thing but hey whatever I don't watch the talking dead so I don't really care yeah. nope um I mean I don't want to speculate on whether or not whatever reason AMC has for bringing him back, uh, whether, you know, they settled it out and, you know, it's under gag order or whatever, like deal with it the way they want to deal with it. Um, he's obviously already been taken off Nerdist and, uh, some other stuff. So, and I don't think they're going to bring him back. It doesn't seem like it. So. If Ty, if AMC wants to have him on Talking Dead, go for it. Yeah. Whatever, you know. Uh, so, uh, you are a Buffy fan. Yeah. Uh, Joss Whedon, along with uh, producers from the original series, are going to executive produce a reboot of Buffy for no. Fox. I'm good. <laughs> You're good? Not interested uh, at all? No. Uh, for a few reasons. Uh, I'm, I, I, I think the idea of, like, a black Buffy just sounds really weird. Like, if you're going to have a black character, have just give her a different name. <laughs> or, you know, just have a new character. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, do we, do we know she's going to be the one? So she's going to play Buffy, then. Well, I think he. I think the story with the story that I saw were like, oh, it's, it's going to be a reboot with a black actress as Buffy, or you know, yeah. Said so why? I mean, it's not, it's kind of like the Nick Fury thing, but they they at least had some groundwork for that with like the Ultimates, you know, right? Comic that line was in the comics, yeah. Uh like just have her don't you know, don't do it, <laughs> and then also. Like, speaking of sexual harassment or, you know, sexual abuse, like, Joss Whedon has some of that going, too. Like, he basically cheated on his wife with, they didn't, like, they, they haven't said who, but, like, I think he said, like, some actresses from Buffy. And it's like, huh. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> uh, like, I mean, there's some there. Like... Like, and him and his wife were together for, like, a fairly long time. Yeah, they were together for, like, 11 years. So, that's slightly odd. And it's more weird that, like, it, like, it didn't, 
it, it's not known who it was. Like, I doubt it's like Sarah Michelle Geller, obviously, but like yeah. if it was some, if it was like Felicia Allison Day, Hagen, maybe. Well, they were like no, because she got together with like, the other guy from Angel. Yeah. Uh, but if it might have been like Felicia Day, or I mean, it might have been like why you kept casting her in different, you know, different stuff, or some, you know, someone like that. Like that, that's what I'm kind of curious about. Um, yeah. I mean, and like he also said, like I think like there was some stuff about, uh, like he like he might have been like emotionally abusive as well. Yeah. I mean, or like he pretends he pretends to be like a feminist, but he's really not. That wouldn't surprise me. So it's like I, if you want to make a new like vampire show, fine. Don't call it Buffy, or you know, don't have the. Well, but he's involved, so that's why they're calling it Buffy. Yeah, but make a Kendra, you know, fucking vampire, uh, uh, vampire slayer show. Well, you know, if you say you're rebooting I mean, Buffy, people are going to watch it, so. I I just think that's a very bad idea all around. I agree with you. You don't need to remake everything, but that's the rate we're going. I mean, it's all, it's already technically it would be the second Buffy reboot, yeah. so. Yes. No. <laughs> well, Joss Whedon is also involved in an HBO show called The Nevers. Was apparently a Victorian era show about superpowered women, uh, which is ironic because you know he was doing the Avengers uh, for you know two of those movies, and he kind of didn't seem like he wanted to do anything involving that again. And here he is doing a show that sort of involves people with superpowers. I mean, I'll wait till it comes out. Uh, I usually give HBO almost any of their dramas a chance. Like, I like the, uh... I've watched the first two episodes of the, uh, Sharp Objects show. It's been decent so far. Um, the one I haven't seen, and the one I I kind of... I'll catch up to it, is a show called Succession. Is that the one with the... He's the head of the, um... Yeah, the media TV, company. The media company, yeah. Yeah. I... I mean, to I mean, watch that, too, and I keep forgetting. Yeah, there's no buzz around. Like, it got renewed, thankfully, I guess, but I know, like, no one talking about it, or I'm not even sure when it's on, so... Yeah, I feel like people were talking about the Sharp Object show, and not that one. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it... Again, like, I'll wait till we get more on it, but, I mean, I guess that's interesting. Him doing a superpower show... For HBO, he has more license to do things, so let's see. I, I, guess. I, I just don't want it to be like some weird version of like you know, super powered Charlie's Angels or X Men, you know, X Women or something. Now that you think of it, it could be that way, huh? Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised if HBO tries to get in that game of having like their own super power thing. Well, so you sort of uh, hinted at this in the previous episode, but HBO also got more into the news because uh, they finally greenlit the Deadwood movie, which that's a series that at some point in my life I will watch. I don't know when. Uh, but yeah, I know it's great or whatever. It just I never watched it. Um, yeah. I, it's only like two seasons long, too, or maybe like yeah. three. Uh, but uh, their current hit show, Westworld... Of course, is the show that has the most Emmy nominations uh, of any show out there. But they also got a lot of backlash last season because they got too meta, too complex. And the uh, the head honcho, Mr. Blois, pretty much came out and was like, you know what? What I love about Westworld is people who really love it, love it. The people who don't like it, they just feel the need to talk about it anyway. So that means we're doing a good job. And this show is not for casual viewers. It requires you to pay attention. Yeah, but you can also say, like, you can say the same thing about Game of Thrones, or even honestly, like, a lot of their shows. Um, 
It's did you see Westworld season two or no? Game of Thrones doesn't really get meta. Game of Thrones just has a lot of talking. Yeah, but it has like a lot of political intrigue. Like if you yeah, miss one but... episode. Like you're gonna the be something you paid attention to Game of Thrones is like the little, the little things here and there. Like Westworld, you really do have to pay attention because I'll watch an episode and I'll be like, "What the fuck just happened?" And that's the thing. Like that's the whole. Like sometimes you might have to watch an episode more than once, which doesn't mean that that's bad. It yeah, means what just... he says. You have to pay attention. You have to. I... You might have to go read shit. I actually just rewatched season one. I bought the Blu-ray of Westworld uh, like a few days ago because uh, it was like cheap. And they actually do lay in a lot of stuff, even for season two, that is expanded upon as more interesting now upon retrospect. Um, I got, like I said, did you watch season two of Westworld though, or no? I watched season two. Yeah, just, like, I didn't like. I I had the only I watched. Season one, when it was going on, I haven't like rewatched it, so it's been a long I, time, and I'd watch season two then, you know. I think season two has more problems than season one does. Like, I don't, I, I think overall, uh, it's not as impactful. Like, I think like the samurai world stuff basically that went felt nowhere. like just filler to me. Yeah, like it was a neat idea, and I liked uh, the main actress, and I liked. Like, it was a funny concept that, like, the guy basically just rewrote, you know, he had the same plot line for Westworld as in Samurai World, but... I mean, it did serve the purpose of showing that Maeve has the power to control... Yeah, other, but they could have been, yeah. they could have been in Westworld, honestly, or... Yeah, but then you would have said, oh, well, then why didn't she do this in Westworld before? Like, you know. To say, you know, if she, if she... I mean, they didn't really explain why she did it in Samurai World either, like... Well, that's because she was about to, like, wasn't she about to get killed? Yeah, she was yeah. about to get killed. And, but, and... again, they could have done that in Westworld. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, like, there's no, there's no like, oh, she just unlocked this power thing or anything like that. Um, so, I, I think there are episodes, or not episodes, plot lines, specific plot lines that are really great in season two. Like, uh... I forget the guy's name, but the Indian guy, Native American guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know who you're and, about. Yeah, like, that was a great episode, and, like, he had an interesting plot line. And, like, certain other ones were good, but I just think on the whole... I like the like, stuff with the, the uh, William's daughter. Yeah. That was interesting. I really hated how they killed off Angela. It was a... Yeah. It, it was a neat... It looked cool, but... Like, I like that... Act. Oh, I'm a friend of that actress. So, yeah. I was like, I want you to come back. Um, but I just think, like, the like, the actual nuts and bolts plotline of, like, Dolores on her little mission just kind of went nowhere. Or it, re- it just really felt flat. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Um, so, yeah. Like, I hope season three is better. I think it'll, it might be interesting if it's switch it again and make her like the hero and it might be interesting to have Bernard as a bad guy but that's about it I feel like I think you and I talked about they might have them switch roles at some point now yeah. that they're out of the park but well, we'll see what they uh, decide to do with season 3 and if they end up winning that best drama award because they do have uh, some stiff competition there I, uh, I think that I think that Native American I forget the guy I don't know the guy's name. The Native American actor, he should have been nominated for something. Yeah, because that was... He had some really good... Uh, and, just that episode of, by itself. Yeah, a lot of people were said, uh, you know, he should have been nominated. Even, like, as an episode was going on, you know. Right. He was like, oh, he's great. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I think the Emmy nominations came out, like, a few weeks ago. Right. Uh, I don't know if you care or not. The only thing I noticed... Uh, the only thing I'm kind of pissed about is... Like, Black Mirror should have gotten more love. <laughs> I'll agree with you there. For as much like, as that uh, show gets slotted every time, they don't... Well, I think yeah. the only one that got... I don't think it got a writing one this year. But the only one it got was Jesse Plemons for, like, the Star Trek episode. Ah. He was great. I, I, I want him to win, honestly. But I'm I glad really Glow wish... got nominated. 
I kind of wish like Christina or Kristen Malati would have gotten nominated too because she was the main actress from that Star Trek one. Yeah, because I thought she was really great too. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I like the Emmys are probably the one that I watch the most. Yeah, that's so. the one people actually care about. Certainly I mean, the Emmys. Oscars just super. I hardly ever watch the movies that get nominated, and then uh, Grammys is so like it's, it's overblown. It's a joke. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, this, uh, this has been rumored for a while that it was going to happen, but finally it's, uh, official Disney has brought back the Clone Wars again, uh, the cartoon show. It's coming back with 12 episodes for the Disney, uh, streaming service thing. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess it gives me an excuse to actually watch these. I watched some of them. I just never watched, like, the whole series, so... I haven't seen any. <laughs> I know a lot of people really like it, so... It's just, I always wanted to know, like, what the hubbub was about with this this show. But, man, people were super excited about this coming back, so... I guess good on Disney. This is what you should use your streaming service for. And I think they did a, a good thing here. Get people excited. You can get kids to... Want to get your streaming service? Now you just gotta know what how much it's gonna cost and what all is gonna be on it. That's the important part. Yeah. Uh, Kelsey Grammer's trying to reboot Frasier, which okay. My dad loved that show. I couldn't care less. So, uh, but why well, not dad... add it to the old shows getting rebooted? <laughs> well, the dad's dead, so that'll be. A little depressing. <laughs> yeah, really. That's that's gonna be sad. But and look, the, uh, a lot of old shows are getting reboots, so I guess why not try Kelsey Grammer? Why not? If it fails, you still live off the old one. Uh something that was interesting to me. I don't know that you're gonna care too much about this at all, but the world's first anime song streaming service called Any Uta. I don't know why it's. It probably means something. Uh, or it's probably like stands for something. I don't know. But uh, either way, August 1st, it's hitting the U.S. There's going to be 10,000 songs available for streaming. It's going to cost $5 a month. Um, there's a lot of different companies involved in it. If you subscribe, you can have up to 1,000 songs stored up in your library. It's Android and iOS only right now. It's not on your PC, so... Uh, most people listen to music through their phone at this point, but maybe at some point they'll put it on PC. Uh, I mean, obviously YouTube has probably most of this stuff available anyway, but it makes it easier to use so that you don't have to do the whole, oh, well, I shut YouTube off, so now I won't play the thing anymore. Uh, I just think this is cool. Like, I think that we've, I think it's cool that we've gotten far enough in this, like being able to bring Japanese stuff over to the U.S. that we're now bringing songs over, so that's that's cool. I like that. I don't know that I might try it out just to see what's on there and stuff, but I don't know that I would keep it in this per se. There's just so many damn streaming services at this point. But yeah, so last thing to talk about obviously is trailers from Comic Con. Sure. Uh, I honestly, I didn't care about Shazam at all. I watched this trailer. I want to watch Shazam now. Uh, I've, I've always been like a Zachary Levi fan, so that also helps too. But it just made me laugh. It doesn't take itself like uber seriously. Like with all this, like, you know, compared to like having the Aquaman movie also be involved in that. And then you have Shazam. It's like, I think it's like a, just a nice breath of fresh air. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I actually probably will see Shazam when it comes out in theaters, which is the first time I've seen a DC movie in a while. <laughs> uh, do you uh, care about the Godzilla movie at all? It's or? funny, I saw I watched that trailer, and I was like, I know I'm supposed to be feeling something, but I don't know what it is. And then I realized at the end of the trailer, it was kind of boredom. <laughs> I feel like they're going to try to overcorrect from the first movie. And they're going to have way too much stuff going on. 
But didn't didn't people like that Kong Skull Island movie? They did like Kong Skull Island, but the first Godzilla people complained oh, okay, didn't Godzilla, have enough Godzilla. Right. Yeah, that was the Brian Cranston one. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it can't be any worse than that 98 Godzilla movie. Oh, well, you know. That's uh, the low bar there. I, I, uh, thought, I thought Godzilla actually kind of looked a little silly, but also I, I just have no cachet with that character or that uh, franchise. So, people want to see it? Cool. Not? Oh, well. <laughs> what did you think of the Aquaman? Aside yeah, from it, Roman Reigns? <laughs> yeah, it was goofy. Like, it looks bad. It looks too serious. Uh, yeah, whatever else you want. You know. I, I don't know. I just... I just so... For one, it's like such a... Like, the only time I ever saw Aquaman was in the, you know, Super Friends cartoons. <laughs> so... Just like all of a sudden, you have this way different Aquaman. I guess they tried to compensate by having the villain sort of look like the original Aquaman, and then uh, or the brother, I guess, is who that is. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just like and there's a, it's just like a lot, and yeah, it's just like really, really freaking serious. And I don't know, it just seems like another one of those Doom DC movies, like. All right, just let me walk out of the theater. My, you know, <laughs> uh, I know you don't care about fantasy stuff, but Disenchantment kind of got me interested because it feels more like Futurama, but fantasy setting. I mean, I may yeah. give it a shot if it gets good reviews, but I, I really just think kind of Matt Groening has like lost his touch in a sense. Yeah, or you know, I can, I can feel you on that one. Even, like, the last few years of Futurama were pretty bad. <laughs> I would agree with that, yeah. Mike. It's that, Oof. basically, when it, went to, when it went to Comedy Central, it's like, all right. Yeah, oh, no, Comedy so, Central so, was just like, oh, God. Even the movies were bad, too, though, I thought. Or, you know, they were trying to be just too cute or, like, you know, tell too much of, of an involved story. And it's like, yeah, I, it's like I don't really need this. You guys kind of lost the what made Futurama work. Here. I agree with you. It's also coming out pretty soon, August 13th, so we won't have to wait too long for that. Uh, of course, Harry Potter, Fantastic Beasts, all that. I'm always down. Uh, finally get to see Nicholas Flamel, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, as far if you're a you know, fan of the Potter series, so that was cool. And I'm just still wondering if we're going to get, like, Jude Law playing Jude Law, if we're going to actually get, like, him trying in this movie. Because uh, I feel bad because I like a lot of the other actors that are in Fantastic Beasts. Like, I like the guy that plays Newt. I like the play that play that the guy that plays Jacob. Uh, the two leads are really... The two female leads are really good. So, it's just, mm. like, the, the Harry Potter characters that they're adding, like, just hopefully... Johnny Depp's he didn't have a big enough role in the first movie, so this one's going to be, let's see what happens with him playing the uh, villain. But. I, I, I like that Johnny Depp is alternating, alternating between Harry, these Harry Potter things and then Kevin Smith films. It's like or good. pirates whenever they feel like doing yeah, that. It's a good, good career move. <laughs> what do you think about the Broly trailer? Looks like they changed Broly's backstory. Yeah, which is kind of weird, because it's like, isn't he already dead? <laughs> well, it's not just that. He doesn't know Goku at all. So, like, that's weird, because the whole reason that he gets angry and all that whatever is because yeah, Goku but, wouldn't like, stop crying. So, in the, like, Aren't those Broly movies not considered canon, or are they? Well, this, this one would be canon now, so... Yeah, yeah, obviously this one is, but like... The, no, I mean, the first none two... of those movies are considered canon... Yeah. So, I I mean, obviously Toriyama, I think may, this makes more sense. Like, if it winds up that he's, like, a experiment or whatever, uh, I think it makes sense why he turns green and he's super powerful and all that stuff, so. Are you are you watching another Dragon Ball show right now? That Heroes thing? Yeah. I didn't even know it had started yet, but I guess I'm going to start watching it. At least already on their third episode, or maybe fourth at this point. Is it, do- is it like, subbed at least? Yeah. Okay. And the episodes are sh- short as shit. 
They're like 10 minutes long. Well, yeah, long. they're really short. They're meant to, like, promote the game, right? Yeah. But I think Broly is supposed to be in that, too. And then they're having, like, the alternate Goku and Vegeta show up at some point. Okay, cool. Which is weird. Like, yeah, that's weird. Here, here's the alternate version, you know, alternate... Like, they already have, like, the different universes, and it's like, okay, now here are alter, also alternate universes of Goku and Vegeta. And... and Vegeta is uh, the same, except now instead of instead of wearing a, a blue and wh- white armor, he wears gray and white. It's yeah. Like, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Goku, Goku's like gi is different colored. I think. Like, yep, that's it. More red that's... or something. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, I also am sort of interested in the Alita Battle Angel movie. Uh, it's from a manga, so yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm interested. Um, I, I, when, I, whenever I see that, I guess just the trailer, I keep flashing back to uh, AI, artificial intelligence, that movie. Oh, <laughs> I'm not God. quite sure why. It's, it has way more action than AI, so that's already a win. <laughs> like, AI bored me to tears. I think I fell asleep. AI, um, well, AI is good up until like the very end, and then it becomes bad. <laughs> yeah, that too. So, and of course Riverdale because I like that show. Season they showed a little bit of season three, so they I'm needed excited. a show. That trailer should have just been two minutes of Cheryl kissing other girls. I would have been on board for that. <laughs> God, it's terrible. I think uh, I, I'm, I'm waiting. A lot of a lot of guys would agree with you on that. I'm waiting for her and like Dark Betty to like have a have a relationship at some point. <laughs> Yeah, like, I could see that happening at some point. Her and Dark Betty, except the fact that they're cousins, so. Oh, well. <laughs> that That's kind of wrong there. If, if they already, I mean, wasn't Cheryl, like, didn't she already have incest with her brother at some point? Or was that just No, implied? it's alluded to that, like, she loves her brother way yeah. more than a sister should. But they don't ever say that that happened. But also, like, I think in the comics it is. Oh, and maybe, yeah, maybe so. Um, uh, so, yeah, the games uh, that are already out this week, Banner Saga 3 is obviously the biggest one. Um, and a lot of people that have been waiting for that. Um, Airheart, which is a sort of like you're in a plane and the whole thing scales vertically instead of horizontally and you keep going up and up until you get to the uh and you keep defeating bosses and such the the no man's sky next for xbox one is out as well mega man x legacy collection one and two which uh you can hear mark talk about on the uh, episode 190 uh rumbo which for god's sakes this game's still getting ported uh it's getting ported to switch ps4 and xbox one all-star fruit racing uh, Train Sim World and East Memories of Salsetta. That's the Vita only version, finally on PC. So if you're an East fan, you might want to check that out. It's twenty five bucks. So yeah, um, since it's freaking Thursday morning, I don't unless something crazy happens. I don't think we're gonna have a show on the weekend. So maybe Monday. I don't know, uh, but. Whenever yeah. your schedule permits. <laughs> yeah, whenever my schedule permits. Uh, but, yeah. Um, it's almost back to the fall TV season. And uh, almost Wait. about to hit fall crazy season for games and everything else. So. Well, it's good for TV since I'm only watching one show and it's bad. So, I don't know about you. but Well, Riverdale doesn't come back to October. Yeah. Um, uh- Oh, the only show I'm watching right now, I mean, is uh, Preacher, which... Oh, Preacher, yeah. I, I still need to, like, watch the last season. I stopped halfway through. You're good. It's not good? No, I said you're good with not, you know... The, the problem with that show is it's acted well. Like, I mean, the main actors are good. Yeah. I but... really love, uh, was it Casey? Or... Yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, But, yeah. Go ahead. But the show, I think the show just moves at a glacial pace. 
and they get oh, you know God. they get stuck in one area for like the whole goddamn season. Oh really? Even worse than last season. Well, now that like last season they were stuck in like you know Las Ve- or New Orleans. Well, and then now, they went to hell a bunch of times. You know, now, to... now they're stuck in Angelville, like uh, Jesse's home. You know, like basically the where old he grew home. up. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, it's like. With three episodes in, and now they're just trying to escape it, and it's like, oh, Lord. and I really just like how they like depowered Jesse to, you know, the Genesis, or you haven't seen it, but they they basically depower him at, at some point. So, Ugh. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, like I said, until next next time. If you like what you heard, we're on Spotify now, by the way, and so is most of the other two M podcasts. Along with the kickoff, so if you go search for us on Spotify and you like, you know, you can uh, subscribe to us there. Put us in your playlist. Uh, you can uh, go on iTunes or whatever other thing that you use to uh, listen to podcasts and hit review us. Hit that five stars. And until next time, go visit WTNet.com. And we'll see you later, everybody. Later. <laughs>